Yeah. yeah. No. No, Mikey, no. No, I, I don't know how to stick battle mats back together. Well, I don't know why you cut it. I don't understand why you did that. I don't... I, I, I can't stitch it. What do you mean, stitch it back together? I've got super glue. You can use super glue. Well, I mean, you're going to have to stick to it now, aren't you? You just have to show everybody that you're committed to this smaller size. No, we're not. No, no, we're sticking to 6x4. We're sticking to 6x4 on DZ as well. Maybe message games work. I don't think enough people have done that yet. Oh, I get it. I get that you want to show people on Instagram that you didn't just jump on a bandwagon and that you thought it was a sensible idea. No, I, I get that. Right, I get it. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. I won't tell anyone that you're regretting it and you think it was stupid and you wish you hadn't... Yeah, I know, I know. Have you changed your name to Hellstrom now? Okay. Right, I've got to go anyway because I've got to film something. All right, mate. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I love you too. All right, Mikey. Okay, bye. Right. Uh, we should start. Welcome to the channel on another ninth edition update. Today we're talking about terrain. Um, there's been some updates come out from Games Workshop over the last week or so about terrain. And there's been a lot of chat about it online. There's been a lot of chat about it in the WhatsApp groups. There's been a lot of chat about it in the Discord. So I thought we would cover that for this video. Before we do that, a quick reminder that during the Saga project, the Space Wolves that I'm building, um, I am donating all commission made from one of my affiliates, the Beard Struggle, to Male Suicide Awareness. It's going quite well at the moment. For the month of June, not only am I matching the commission myself as a donation to that particular charity, but it also enters you into a competition to win a £50 voucher for Games Workshop or Element. Why one or the other? Well, that means that you guys in the US can be involved as well, because obviously Element don't ship 40k products out to America. So for this month, you go via my link and use discount code LTDEMPS for 15% off. Not only will you be getting some amazing products, they are, I mean, look at this thing, they are good, uh, but you will also be helping a charity, a quite an important charity at the moment, actually. Specifically, considering what's going on in the world, I really want to do some good here. Now, the last video did amazingly well, which is awesome. So that's why we're going to keep bringing you these kinds of videos. I did say that when I had everything sorted and it all looked nice and pretty, I wanted to start kicking out these kinds of regular updates. And this is in that similar vein. Uh, what YouTube told me last time was that a lot of people watch this who aren't subscribers, which is amazing. Welcome to the channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell if you want to be notified when these videos come out, and I can give you these updates in sort of layman's terms I guess and try and make some more sense of it for people. I think part of the problem is that people skim read these community articles, they go to things like Facebook and then it, it gets blown out of proportion and the idea here is that we break them down and try and make more sense of them for you. Now these new terrain rules, that's one of these situations. There was a lot of screaming, a specifically about one particular rule that we will obviously cover later in the video and I wanted to make sure that we clarified that a little bit more um, because I think it's important people know that they're not necessarily bound by some of these rules that come out and actually some of them are optional. This is one of those. So in 8th edition there was some criticism over the terrain rules, basically that they weren't necessarily detailed enough, they didn't give enough options or they didn't offer enough protection to particular types of armies. In 9th they look like they've completely overhauled terrain rules for the better it seems. Uh, I know Winters and I on many DZHQs or sit and talks talked about the terrain rules for 8th edition and how we wish they did a little bit more or helped add to the story. That definitely looks like the direction they've tried to go in with terrain in ninth. Now there is an article out that was released on the 11th of June, just looking down at my magic tablet so I can give you the right date. Uh, on the community page you can go find it yourself under one of the Warhammer 40k new edition articles called Terrain Rules and Line of Sight and they talk about the changes to terrain and give you some examples as to the sort of things they've done. We're going to cover that in this video. So firstly they basically tell us that terrain is broken down into four categories of terrain and that's good because it's simple so any piece of terrain on the battlefield will come under one of these four categories of terrain whatever it might be. Now I don't I like that because it's not 20 types of terrain or 30 types of terrain or every single different piece of terrain that you can buy from the Games Workshop store has its own specific name with rules. It is just four types. Those four types are broken down into hills, obstacles, area terrain and buildings. Now that's something that you can't necessarily change. Maybe you do have to agree this with your opponent at the start of the game but pretty much most of it has been given a definition already. It's just a type of terrain. It doesn't at this point offer any real rules or benefits necessarily. It's just a type of terrain. So that's a hill, that's a, an area terrain, that's a building, that's that. However, brand new for 9th edition is terrain traits. Now we've had sort of similar sorts of things to this before. Um, these are basically universal special rules from previous editions, but they're applied to terrain rather than applied to models and units. Now terrain traits are 
optional. That's the big thing I want to drive home here. They're optional. You don't have to use the terrain traits. You're obviously encouraged to because it adds immersion, it adds layers of rules that can help protect certain armies, but you don't have to. They're optional. It doesn't tell us how many traits there are. I'd imagine there are quite a few, but there are some that are listed in this article. One thing it does say about terrain traits is that terrain traits are stackable. It doesn't mean that a single piece of scenery has one terrain trait and can't have a second. A single piece of scenery can have three, four, five terrain traits, depending on whether you think that they fit that particular area or that particular the part of the battle board and the story you're trying to tell. Interestingly, it does state that these should be agreed with your opponent before the game begins. Kind of similar to what we did in 8th edition anyway, where we went, that offers you cover, that doesn't, but a bit more complex. So uh, how we track this is going to be what I think will be the challenging part, because if you say that this piece of terrain here has these four traits, and this piece has these three traits, and this piece has these two traits, it could be a bit overly complicated to try and track that, and I don't know how we're going to do it. It's amazing for the narrative player, because it offers us an extra level or layer of narrative to the game, but it could make it a bit more complex in terms of trying to track what things do and what things mean specifically for later on in the game when you're trying to work out do i get that plus one save can i climb up that building uh, do we, did we give it that trait yeah i think we did normally these arguments won't happen for narrative players on the whole because they're playing for the same reason for the love and the, and the narrative of the game i would imagine that tournaments are going to sim uh, simplify this significantly so i'd imagine it'll be blanket statements for certain pieces of terrain i, I don't think it's going to be overly complex i think I think tournaments are going to go, this is obscured, this is that, just so that you avoid those arguments. So what they also do with the community ar article is they give us some examples of terrain traits. The two main ones they gave us to start with are light and heavy cover. This is really interesting. Light cover basically gives you plus one to your saving throws, not including invulnerable saves, against ranged firepower. And heavy gives you plus one to your saving throws, not invulnerable saves, against melee weapons. There's a lot of discussion about uh, in WhatsApp groups about this doesn't make sense. Heavy should be more against ranged and light should be about against melee. To me, it doesn't make much difference. I know that one's ranged and one's melee. So what I'll do when I agree with my opponent is that's going to be the type of cover that you need for melee and that's going to be the type of cover that you need for ranged. Uh, yeah, I get it. I get that heavy cover, like a bunker, you would like to think offers you more protection against ranged firepower than light. As always, obviously, these don't affect invulnerable saves. That's important. So they're plus one saving throws, but they don't affect invulnerable saves. And what I really love about this is there is a way of getting a saving throw against melee attacks, granted not on the turn in which the opponent charged, but at least that's in there. Something that us melee players haven't had for a long time. I think that's a welcome change. Now the rule that's got everyone up in a tiz, obscuring. This is a interesting rule. It's mildly complex. I think the rules this edition seem to be a bit more wordy than in previous editions. Not sure if that's good or bad. I think a lot of people did complain about the simplicity in, in 8th edition and that things were very easy to interpret in a different way. And I think they seem to have tried to add a layer of complexity to these rules so that you can avoid those situations, but they are a bit wordy and they can be hard to understand. I'm going to read obscuring from the uh, from the article in front of me, just so I don't get it wrong. If this terrain feature is at least 5 inches in height, the models cannot see through or over this terrain feature. This means that one model is not visible to another if you cannot draw a straight line 1 millimeter in thickness between them without it passing through or over any part of this terrain feature. The height of the terrain feature is measured from the highest point on that terrain feature. Models that are on or within this terrain feature can be seen and targeted normally. Aircraft models and models with a wounds characteristic of 18 or more are visible and can be targeted even if this terrain feature is between it and the firing model. Note that the reverse is not true. We have Imperial Knight here, terrain feature hit. This is my the terrain feature. It's like a gore. Terrain feature bigger than five inches, Imperial Guardsman. I don't know why an Imperial Knight would be shooting an Imperial Guard. Whatever, traitor guardsman, fine, it doesn't matter. Now, this has more than 18 wounds. This terrain features more than five inches tall. This guardsman can shoot at the knight. The description they give you is that a knight towers above terrain. Of course, the guardsman can see and shoot at the Imperial Knight. However, the Imperial Knight cannot shoot at the guardsman. It cannot bring its weapons to bear because this guardsman is obscured by this five inch piece of terrain. A lot of sort of hate for this, about silly situations that could exist. Personally, I think it's excellent. It allows the smaller units that exist in 40k some level of protection across that battlefield against your big knights, your big tanks, all those sorts of things. I think it's really, really, really positive that they have that level of protection. It works for guardsmen and tank, like Lehman Russ. They can't see each other. The guardsmen can't shoot the tank, the tank can't shoot the guardsmen. They can't, you can't shoot what you can't see at. Obviously, this rule isn't necessarily an effect, I don't, I would imagine, for things like basilisks and 
and things that are indirect fire, things that don't require line of sight. But the obscuring trait, a tra terrain trait otherwise, I think is a real positive change. The other thing I really love about it being obscuring is it stops a situation that existed in 8th edition that I really, really despised. I think a lot of people probably despise this. And that's when a player gets down to eye level and he looks through that little crevice that exists in that ruin so he can see the heel of the Marine he wants to shoot at and claims that now his tank can fire all weapons at that Marine because he can see his heel through that little, co a little corner down there. I can see your foot so I can definitely shoot at you even though I would need to punch through the building with my tank for the shell to be able to get there because the hole's so small I definitely couldn't shoot through the hole but because I... That's gone. Again, I've had this chat with Winters and I fully understand his argument. He says it's simple and simple means the game's easier and more fun and there's less arguments. And I, I do agree. I genuinely do agree. But some of those situations were just... I like my 40k to tell me a narrative story on the tabletop. And for me, that wasn't narrative and I didn't like it. Again, remember though, remember this, guys. It's a trait that you can choose to apply with your opponent. I think it's a massive positive for the tournament and the match play scene. For narrative, you can choose to apply it. And when you're playing your narrative match against your narrative opponent, who you know quite well, you can choose to bend those rules on the day. It's your 40k. It's your game. You can play it any way you want to. Now, obviously, a point to note on that particular rule is that units that are within the terrain feature can shoot out of said terrain feature, and models either side of the terrain feature can shoot into the terrain feature and the units that are on it. It's only obscuring if you're other sides of the terrain feature and you cannot draw a straight line through. So if you have your unit inside that terrain piece, they're not necessarily protected in terms of they can't be targeted. However, they probably have at least got the benefit of light cover, which is another trait. So they probably have got what plus one to their cover save, so they will get that level of protection, but they still can be targeted. They have said that the rule book gives you a load of guides as to what is what and they give some examples on the page ruins and armored containers it tells you what the category is so ruins is area terrain um, armored containers are obstacles and then it gives you the terrain traits which gives me some in gives us an indication that there are more than the three we've been given so the terrain traits for ruins for example are scalable we don't know what that does yet breachable light cover defensible and obscuring so we don't i don't think we know what defensible is i think i've had some rumors about it we don't know what breachable is we don't know what scalable is i mean scalable obviously means you can climb it breachable means you can go into it i assume and defense will, will mean something different, obviously. We don't know what those mean, but that means that there is more than four traits. I don't know how many traits there are. The Armoured Containers has a couple of those traits and it also has the Exposed Position trait, which is interesting. There's a lot of customization for your battle board now to allow you to tell the narrative story that you want to tell. Finally, in this article is a word on battlefield sizes. I mean, I made the joke at the start, right? And if you guys have seen Hellstorm Wargaming and the ultimate wind-up that is Mikey, um, but he has been on a full social media troll for quite a while now about these battle mat sizes. I love him for a little bit. It's kept me very entertained. But they, they definitely had a lot of feedback about the fact that the battlefield sizes were changing. And they've come out to clarify and say that you can use your 6x4 and there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that at all. They did all also clarify that the reason for using the 44 by 60 size for strike forces is because most kitchen tables are roughly that size and it allows people to play on their kitchen tables. I Not everybody is lucky enough to have a table like mine, 6x4, set up in a specific... I get that. In fact, that's quite rare. I really genuinely get that. And I think it's really nice that they are offering people the opportunity to be able to play on their dining room tables. It makes it more accessible for people and it makes it more accessible for younger people as well who want to be able to play this hobby. And I'm all for that. The more people we can bring in, the better the hobby is going to be. I think that's a brilliant thing. They obviously say that the smaller table sizes are there to allow that to happen. They also say that the minimum sizes are there so that bigger armies, and it's a minimum size so that bigger armies aren't cramped on the smaller battlefields and you can scale it up to whatever size you see fit. They have to give a they have to give a guide. They have to give a guide. We can't just choose a battlefield size and you because otherwise you will find people playing 4,000 points on a one foot square. Just And if they didn't give us a, a sort of guideline for it, people would complain about that as well. A load of people got in touch after the last video and pointed out that the 30 by 44 60 by 44 are variations or multiples of their battle boards that they produce i think for kill team thanks for i never knew thanks for telling me that i had no idea it makes even more sense now that they're offering you the opportunity to buy these simple battle boards push two together and there you go you have a playable strike force size table that you can put on your ikea kitchen table and you can play with your son i think that's amazing 
I am all for that. That's incredible. I would like to see them sell these fold-out kill team boards separately because they're going to be cheaper than the realm of battle battle boards that you can buy. I have a realm of battle battle board that was like UK money was like 150 quid from Games Workshop. If these come out at 15, 20 pounds, not only can you buy two for Strike Force at say 40 quid, it's significantly cheaper and you can fit it on your kitchen table. That's more accessible than ever before. I am 100% for that. I think that's amazing. So I have dropped that out. I know Mikey's been on a trial. Don't listen to him, kids. You play whatever size you want to play. Anyway, that's a quick update on terrain from the community page. I hope it's been useful to you guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've liked it, make sure you smash that like button. If you don't, give it a dislike. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can catch all these future videos. They have released other articles about monsters and tanks and things that they do. And obviously last weekend they did the big reveal, which was stupidly exciting. I've never been so excited for a Games Workshop 40k starter box in my life. I think it's the best one that they have produced by a country mile, and I don't even know the price yet. So that's amazing. Can't wait to get my hands on that and we'll have a look at it when it comes out so if you like this sort of content if you're enjoying these sorts of updates like i say make sure you hit subscribe uh, make sure you keep buying your bid struggle products so we can donate more money to male suicide awareness um, there will be a link below to the website don't forget to use that discount code for your 15 percent off i uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this thank you very very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one